In this video, I want to explain what is Grasshopper and why we should use it. And I'm going to also give a little bit of history of scripting, why we need Grasshopper instead of scripting, and what is the most important thing about visual programming language. So first of all, if we have a 3D modeling software, something like Rhino, as you can see here, uh, there are commands which just run something. Assume that I just simply draw a box in Rhino and then I want to twist it. So the developers are just giving commands based on the designer's needs. So they just designed a command called twist, which we can twist this uh, box around an axis. So uh, the developers don't close the software at the end of that because Sometimes we want to combine things. Assume that I want to twist this box, but what if it was a simple uh, curved box? So if I have something like this, assume that I have a curve in this uh, 3D model, and let's use the slab. I want to show you a simple method of why we need uh, scripting and then uh, what happens to the visual programming language. So assume that we have a box here and we want to twist this around the curve here. So there's no command in Rhino that twists something around the curve, but we can combine things. Maybe we can just uh, have a section of this box with different locations and then rotate these boxes and then again connect them together. So we're going to define something new uh, because we want something which is not in the software. So mainly the most professional softwares, uh, as you know, uh, like uh, AutoCAD has an AutoLisp uh, programming language, which, which you can just type in your commands and uh, automate things. Um, Maya has a Maya embedded language or MEL, which is also a scripting language, which you can use in Maya. Uh, 3D Studio Max has a Max script, which you can use this. And uh, SketchUp has a Ruby uh, scripting, which you can uh, run uh, Ruby commands in SketchUp. But the problem with this is, let's just go to the Rhino thing. And also we have a Rhino script in Rhino. So Rhino is a professional software. It's a big one, so you can also script in it. But Let's assume that we want to script. Before I enter the scripting thing, uh, I want to go to the, uh, to the tools section and explain the tools, commands, and the macro editor. So what does that mean? Sometimes we want to combine uh, commands in software. So this is also called a macro. So if you see a macro somewhere, that means that you want to combine uh, commands together. So if I go here and assume that I draw a circle and then extrude that into, uh, let's just cap this, into a solid, you can see that first I typed the circle command. So, and then I just give it a center and a radius. So let's go to the uh, tools, commands, and macro editor, and let's type something here. We can type circle at the center of the circle is zero, 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 and space, and the radius is something like 10. So let's just play this. You can see that I just draw a circle at the center with a radius 10. Okay, now I want to extrude this up to the end. So uh, if I go to the selection menu, you can see that there's a last created object uh, tool which will select the last created and you can see that this is the command. So you can also copy this with this part and let's just delete this and again run that. And you can see that this is selected. Now I'm going to go to this command which will extrude uh, closed planar curve when we choose this I can extrude that and you can see that this is the command extrude curve okay you can also find this in the surface and here extrude straight so you can see that this is the command I'm going to use this extrude curve 
the curve is selected before that and let's just say 30 okay let's delete this and run this command so you can see that I just uh, uh, ran a command so we can just put this to maybe uh, 60 and again run this so this is a simple macro editor but it's not a really advanced thing uh, the scripting section is to go a little bit further and advanced when you go to the tools section you can see there's a Rhino script you can also have a Python scripts something like that okay let's so let's go to the Rhino script and go to the edit and you can see that you can type your commands here uh, Rhino script is a little bit more advanced than a my, uh, macro editor so assume that we want uh, to draw a curve we have to give this uh, something like an add circle and so on uh, you want to hatch that you can go to the hatch methods uh, add hatches you have to uh, define a curve back to that circle and so on so we are uh, giving commands to the computer by typing this so I'm not going to enter the scripting section I just want to say that scripting is something that we explain uh, our technique to the computers by typing uh, our information or our commands okay so the problem with scripting it is, is that it's a little bit hard because no one uh, most of the uh, architects or designers don't like scripting because it will just uh, eventually hijack their crea creativity most of the designers there are designers who script uh, there's no problem about that but I mean most of the designers don't want to script they're searching for a, a way to design complex things without programming so the next step going a little bit forward uh, forward for that to define things uh, little graphically things is the visual programming language so you can also search the visual programming language and go to Wikipedia and you can see that this is a lot there are a lot of uh, softwares which use the visual programming language technique to design so you can see this is a uh, program in scratch uh, and you can see that this is using these graphical things visual things to define something and you can find grasshopper here you can see that grasshopper is a generative modeling interface for rhino we also have autodesk dynamo here for revit so the most important thing is why should we use Grasshopper instead of Dynamo or other things? So, about the visual programming language history, I'm going to say the one which entered maybe architecture or design was first the Bentley uh, generative components. So, this software was uh, long ago and they designed something which you combine those things. You can see there's a node types, you combine them and you produce something parametric but uh, Bentley GC didn't really go further and I guess that's because of the community of designers didn't really enter that because uh, using graphical or visual programming language needs a good community to increase the awareness of that so more designers into that so uh, first uh, the first thing that happened was grasshopper so let's just go to the grasshopper thing you can find it in Wikipedia and Grasshopper 3D. And what about the note based editor? I'm going to explain that a little bit further. But uh, other programs also entered this phase. But as you can see, uh, it first appeared at 2007, 11 years ago. And grasshopper3d.com, if you go to the website, uh, is a great website and has, ha and has a good community support forum. Uh, you can also have a complete discussions on that so the most important strength of grasshopper is that it has an active community the next thing is that you can go to foodforrhino.com and you can see that this website is also uh, another uh, thing for rhino grasshopper and you can see that there are rhino apps grasshopper apps which you can use and it's a great resource for Rhino and Grasshopper. So you can see that there are plugins which simply enter the uh, Grasshopper interface and we can use them to design different things. 
Okay, so uh, about other visual programming languages, uh, which you want to know is, uh, let me just show you, there is Dynamo in Revit, which is a programming a graphical visual programming language, which you can see, we can connect those, and I'm going to explain why these are happening in Grasshopper. Uh, the Another software which you can see is MCG, or Max Creation Graph, you can also search for that. Max Creation Graph is uh, also a new brand, new visual uh, programming language. So it's in the Max, uh, Autodesk Max software, and you can use that. So this is another one, MCG. But before MCG, uh, there was something called Para 3D software, which was also another note-based software we can see here, which you just design parametrically with the knots. So after that, um, Autodesk used this um, MCG to enter the uh, visual programming language uh, softwares. Okay, so uh, at the end, uh, I'm going to <clears throat> go to the Rhino and explain why we just skip Rhino scripting. It is a good thing for designers, but I guess that most of us try to design visually, it's going to make it a little bit easier. So uh, assume that we want to uh, run a command in Rhino and I have this simple curve here and let me just use the Alt key and move this up. And we have a command in Rhino called the tween curves. So what happens is that it draws, let me just run this, the start of this curve and the end and we can define maybe 15 curves between these two, okay? By default, when you run a Rhino command, uh, you are giving static orders to the computer. So it means that draw uh, 15 curves between this and that, and that's finished, okay? So you can see that if I move this, this is not reacting to the start or the end curve. But if you go down here and you have a record history, you can see down here, and run the tween curves, Okay, you can see that if I move this, the curves will be updated. We can use the control points. Let's assume that we want to just move this up and down. And you can see how simple it is to design. And here we go. So this is reacting to the start and the first curve. And it's a like a something like a dynamic command because it's always running that tween curve command and updating things and so on. But assume that I just use another command in Rhino and extrude these in the Y direction, okay? And you can see that those curves are extruded in the Y direction, but let's move the base curve a little bit up. And you can see that those extrudes, uh, the extruded surfaces are not connected to the tween curves. And that is because Rhino only uses one command as record history. So something like this, let me just show you another example. We have four simple curves here. And we can run a command called network surface. Let's say OK. And you can see that it tweens between these two curves and tweens between these two curves and produces a network of NURBS curves so we can have this surface. So now I'm going to hit the record history and now use the network surface. And here we go. We can control and do, uh, have this out, points on, and I'm going to move these points, the control points of those curve a little bit up. And you can see that the network surface will update and that is because it's just connected to the uh, record history and it's going to update the surface for that and you can see if I just move the surface it says that the history warning is drag, uh, dragging broke history of one object and you have to undo that change control Z to change that surface so the problem with Rhino is that we can only define one recorded history and not more so uh, Rhino just added a grasshopper interface which will uh, okay let's go to the simple one uh, which will give you more uh, creativity uh, according to the record history so assume that I want to 
uh, have those two curves. Let's just go back and let's go to the tween curves here. Okay. And let's assume that we had these two curves. So I'm going to move this here. And you can see that this is uh, updated, so we can delete those. Okay. And in Grasshopper, there's a, a graphical interface, so we can also have a start curve. Set this to this one and end curve. And then we can also use the tween curve command, the curve A, curve B, and define set of numbers between 0 and 1 and you can see that I can define 12 of them so we can increase that okay and now it's going to update based on this end curve we had here let's just move this but in grasshopper we are just recording everything so if I come and extrude those curves and let's say we extrude them again in the y direction. It's not a really good thing to do, but you can do that because we need an offset or something to do. Okay, and I'm extruding this. You can see that they are extruding in the y direction and if I change the base of the start and the end curve, they will update. The number of the tween curves will also update and we can change everything. So this is the uh, benefit of visual programming language and using the grasshopper technique to design and you can see that I can also use plugins uh, maybe let's just decrease that uh, the numbers of the twin curve and uh, design something like a space truss and simply give to that surface and we can define the number of the U in the V division simply by changing this okay and you can see that we are creating a truss based on just simply two curves and then I can give this a height maybe something like this and again we can just turn this off or maybe turn this on again we can go and use a pipe command to produce pipes on that okay you can shift key and maybe 75 percent for the radius and now you can see that i can simply produce uh, a set of uh, space trusses basically by just giving two sets of curves we can also update the start curve and you can see this is going to be updated and we can bake that back into the rhino so grasshopper is a uh, visual programming language will, which will help you to record every step in Grasshopper and then get it back into Rhino. So this is the explanation of uh, Grasshopper and its visual programming language. You can also uh, learn. We have the website of the uh, parametric house. You can see that we have a Grasshopper course. You can enter the course or you can use our latest tutorials which uh, uh, one of them you can you can learn grasshopper uh, in many different subjects I just added this you have rhino tutorials grasshopper tutorials and maybe some definitions and then we have the course which uh, you can also uh, enter the course attend the course and learn more about grasshopper so you can uh, use this uh, tutorials to learn more and more about grasshopper uh, rhino and also those definitions which will help you to go uh, through that um, grasshopper learn learning process. You can also go to our YouTube channel which uh, we have added those tutorials and you can enter that and uh, you can see those tutorials simply the grasshopper course, the Rhino grasshopper tutorials. We have also added a parametric design section which you can see uh, some videos which are related to parametric uh, design uh, channel. Okay, so this was a short tutorial of what is Grasshopper and why we should use it. Remember, when we want to work with Grasshopper is those time uh, when we want to change the parameters. Maybe we want to change the number of the trusses here. Uh, when we want to change the uh, extrusion here, so. When we want to change those numbers, we have to come into Grasshopper, uh, define those recorded histories, 
step by step and then uh, turn them back into Rhino and produce the results. So you can always uh, produce that results in Rhino by baking uh, the geometry back in Rhino and have that static uh, geometry. So you can see that these are static geometry. When I change that uh, simple curve, it will not update the results and this is only um, connected in Grasshopper. Okay, thank you for watching. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to comment on this video and thank you for subscribing to our channel.